Welcome back. So we're talking about the singular value decomposition of a matrix X into the product of three matrices U times sigma times V transpose. And very often we're going to do a truncated SVD where we only keep a rank R approximation where R is much smaller than the original dimensions of our data matrix X. But this begs a question, in real world examples, how do I choose the rank of this truncation R? It's not always obvious um, how to choose the number of modes R in your data X. Okay, and there's a really nice paper by Gavish and Donahoe from 2014 where they show that under certain conditions on the structure of X that there is an optimal criterion for choosing this rank R. And in particular, they assume that your matrix X is actually a product, uh, a low rank matrix, so that it's actually the product of, of two rank R yeah, column R columns times R rows, so it's really a rank R matrix, plus noise, kind of a, a white noise matrix of Gaussian distributed noise. And if your X really is low rank plus noise, then they give an optimal criterion for how to choose this rank R. And in particular, you take all of the singular values, sigma, j, that are bigger than some threshold value and you keep those, and any that are lower than, than the threshold you throw away or you zero them out. And so that's how you choose the R modes to keep based on the R singular values that are above the noise floor, okay? And again, I'm, I'm gonna sound like a, a broken record here, but if you wanna use a new mathematical method try it out on a system where you know the answer. That's what we do uh, in research all the time. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna cook up an example that's an exactly rank two system. So we're gonna cook up an example that is exactly a rank two matrix. I'm gonna have two columns times two rows. I'm gonna add Gaussian white noise to it. And we're gonna see how this Gavish Donahoe hard thresholding works, okay? Uh, so again, we're going to um, we're going to essentially create a matrix U, sigma, and V that are low rank, two columns, two rows, and two elements of sigma. And I'm building them like this. So my two columns of U is gonna be a cosine times a Gaussian, E to the minus T squared is a Gaussian. So it's kind of this Gaussian decaying envelope with a cosine wave in there, uh, and a sine wave with 11 frequency. And similarly, my V columns are going to be a sine wave times a Gaussian and a cosine wave. And if I multiply these up, um, X equals U times sigma times V transpose, then this is the matrix I get here. So this is my low rank matrix. It's exactly rank two. I built it so that it has rank two. And now what we're going to do is we're going to corrupt it with white noise, and we're going to see how the Gavish Donahoe criterion filters and selects a rank two uh, sub matrix from the SVD. Okay. So it's really simple to add noise. Uh, I'm adding unit uh, variance Gaussian white noise. So I just take x plus uh, sigma times np.random.randn, the same size as x. And now this is my noisy data. This is the data in x. I'm pretending that this is the only data I've ever seen, even though I know that it was generated from a rank two system above. Okay, and we're gonna compute the SVD of this matrix, and we're gonna try to figure out what rank to truncate. So when I compute the SVD of this, um, we're gonna compute the SVD here, and we're going to run this uh, Gavish Donahoe criterion here. So here the cutoff, this, this threshold, is four over the square root of three times the square root of n, where n is the, the size of this square matrix, times sigma, which is the known noise magnitude. Now, if you have a rectangular matrix or you have an unknown noise magnitude, you have to use a slightly more complicated formulation that's also in their paper uh, that works really well for rectangular matrices where you don't know the magnitude of noise. But here, our life is a little bit easier. And again, we're gonna pick R to be the number of singular values that are above this threshold cutoff. And then we're gonna reconstruct X only from those two modes that are kept. And this is what we get. So this is the kind of cleaned 
matrix after you use this optimal gavish donahoe threshold to discover the rank of the system. And you can see there's a little bit of artifact uh, in this, but this is very, very clean compared to that noisy matrix. Now, if you do something naive, like pick the rank R so that it captures 90% of the variance of the matrix X, and this is actually quite common. People often pick uh, the, the POD or PCA, the number of modes to be um, so that you capture 90% or 95% or 99% of the, the energy or the variance in X. If you do that kind of naive uh, criterion where you pick all of the singular values that are larger, that capture more than 90% of the, uh, that capture up to 90% of the energy, you get a really, really bad truncation. You have way too many modes you're keeping and you're keeping a lot of noise modes. So the Gavish Donahoe criterion does a great job of identifying that this is actually a rank two system, whereas kind of the, the classical wisdom of energy-based truncation is really, really crummy here. And you can see this when you actually plot the singular values. So here we're gonna do a log plot, a semi-log plot of the diagonal elements of the sigma matrix, these singular values, and we're gonna interpret kind of what's, what's happening here. So in white, we see the singular value distribution. This blue line is the optimal Gavish Donahoe hard threshold cutoff. And so we're only keeping these two singular values that are above the noise floor, and we're throwing away everything that's below the noise floor, okay? So most of the remainder of this, this white line looks like uh, what you would get if you just SVD'd this noise matrix. If you SVD'd this, then the sigma values would look a lot like what we see over here, okay? And anything that's peaking up over this, uh, over this noise floor, those are the rank modes that we're gonna keep, okay? And if you zoom in, you can see that there are in fact two modes that are well above the noise floor. Everything else is pushed below, so we can actually identify that quite cleanly. And this is uh, the cumulative energy of the first R modes. What I'm plotting here in yellow are all of the bad modes you would include if you tried to keep 90% of the variance of your noisy data matrix. You'd end up having 400 uh, modes when you really only need two modes. These, you can actually see the little blue modes down here. Those are the ones you actually want to keep. Okay, so uh, really, really powerful method. This is the hard thresholding, the optimal hard thresholding method of Gavish and Donahoe to choose the rank R of your matrix. Very powerful, and you can also apply this to systems that are not like toy systems where you cooked up a low rank matrix plus noise. You can apply this to the eigenfaces data we worked in the last example. So I encourage you to do that, actually take the eigenfaces example, run it through the Gavish Donahoe hard thresholding algorithm and look and see how it actually segments the matrix into structure uh, and then stuff which is kind of fluctuations or noise. Okay, thank you.